Alright guys, here we are. I'm going to show you how to do a quick speed run on Hudson Refugee Camp for the event. It's a bit late in it, but uh, well, you can always use this just to grind maps. So I'm just going to replay this, put her on challenging. Just a regular outbreak, no need to do anything else because I'm by myself. The extra little bit's not worth the hassle. Alright, let's set up. Challenging, regular outbreak. Let's do it. Agent, it's Dr. Candle. I wanted to stress to you the vital importance of safeguarding any civilians you may come across. The map says some of those people must have survived the dollar flu. That means they've got antibodies to it that I need to have a hope in hell of fighting this thing. And the ones who are just sick, having a broad... I mean, quite clearly, I'm not just going to be a pro here. Uh, this is more just to show you the technique that I use to speed run it. I'm not going to do hundreds of runs here so I can get a perfect run to show off. Because I ain't a dick. It's basically got a lot to do though with the way that you do the end bosses. So when you're by yourself, especially if you want to do this on a high outbreak level, which I'm not currently doing, but the second and third outbreak level will cause enemies to drain your health when they're close and it's quite substantial, especially if like me you're going for bit of a glass cannon build. So I'm going for a lone star, high firepower, low stamina and skill power build. I like it. My brother can do about 1.5 mil damage though with uh, sticky bombs, so well, something I'd like to check out eventually, but I'm still trying to build my full set here, which this really helps with. So while you're doing this event, you can get 750 global event credits each time you do one of these. So two maps of these, not including the extra credits you get for killing named enemies in the mission, you'll be able to get yourself a superior catch. Now, I haven't timed this perfectly, but you can do this in about, oh, you know, 10, 15 minutes, quicker if you're with a team or something like that, quicker once you get yourself into a bit of a rhythm, depending on your build and everything else. All right, so here on challenging, they'll come out the left there's still some enemies here, kill them first, but once I advance far enough up, they'll all of a sudden come out of that there. Alright, so I'll run forward, spawn them, and then I'll run back and deal with them. This can really end your playthrough if you playing on the higher outbreak difficulties because they can take you quite quickly from nowhere and it can be a bit of a failure cascade after that point. So I'd move back here, you can get past the train to the back and it gives you a good place to kind of fall back to. Luckily these are cleaners, cleaners are nice and easy, They're probably one of my favourite enemies in the game. The weak point is a good idea, it adds an extra mechanic that makes them a lot more fun to play than just say, oh no. Just the shield guys, I mean they're fun enough, they've got a weak point as well, but something satisfying about making them pop. Keep in mind that while you're doing this, the elite, the yellow labelled enemies, when you hit their weak points, they will generally charge at you these guys, at least the ones with the generic tanks and flamethrowers. Pretty sure he's dead. Alright, now we're going to head up. If you need, there is a restock chest at the back of the, this cart here. That's quite handy if you don't want to run all the way back to the start in case you used quite a bit of ammunition. Uh, we'll advance down here. Quite obviously got a few traps here. Nothing hard to deal with. Once again, this is kind of a hard bit. If you're doing it on the global event and you have severe outbreak or higher on, these bits can be quite deadly because they spawn quite close to you. So, some down the train there. Just wait for this fire to dissipate. Now this is the trickier bit here, because as you go up, you need to go near this train, and once you go near the train, they'll spawn right in front of you. 
when they do that, obviously you instantly start taking damage. If you turn around and try and run, well, they're going to run at the same speed. You're just going to be taking damage, so you've really got to try and pop them off quickly. Those two come from the other side. Didn't even realise you'd be talking. Ah. These ones are easy to dodge, just left and right. As I say that, I just completely cop the first one. Alright, there we go. Nice and easy. Just keep in mind as well, I'm not running max gear. But, if you take a look at my inventory now, I'm running about 8,500 firearms, 4,000 stamina, and about 3,000 electronics. And I've got 3-piece Lone Star on, a Strikers, and a Sentry's Call, and then the Ninja Messenger Backpack, which allows me to fill in a gear slot for each of those sets. That's mostly just for the LMG build I'm running, but the high firepower definitely helps a lot with these sniper shots. And that's what you want to mostly be doing to make this a lot quicker. Hit the big dudes with that, and then we need something like the Alejandro, or the Big Hog, because you want a lot of firepower to constantly rake the melee guys at the end who will come through in a line. They can really end your playthrough. They're the big ones we're going to deal with. So most people try and run left or right, take a position upstairs, but we're not going to. We're going to go a different way. We're going to push aggressive, and we're going to push right. Oh, nice field proficiency to create there for me. Detonate my mind on myself. Another charge of melee guys here, just be careful. While playing on Outbreak, if you can get a nice line on the headshots, I was hit 204k there. These guys are pretty easy. You're unlikely to uh, see anything else here, but completely. You won't see anything else here, we just killed everything else. Uh, run through. As a p bit of a side note, you might not want to pick up all the yellows anymore because you've got too much cash, but if you do scrap the yellows, you have a chance of getting yellow division tech, which you can use to upgrade your preferred items. I mean, I've got 54 mil at the moment. I got up to nearly 100 mil. Uh, I just got sick of buying the 400k crates at the base and opening them. But if you scrap them, you get a chance for division tech, so you don't have to bugger around too much in the dark zone. Chasing the elusive 290 gear score division shield. Ah, oh, here's another easy bit. That's the first headshot. Second. Oh, did nice. 1.7 mil there. Another 1.7 mil. I don't even know what's going on. As you can see, I'm not an expert. Just many, many shots in. But that's alright. Oh, that guy jumped over and copped the second headshot. The chest. Oh, that's teamwork. Saved your friend's life there. Briefly. Oh, 
Oh, 1.8 mil. That's what I like to see. This is where the outbreak event can really help, especially if you want to try some other maps and grind some other maps. I always recommend uh, either this or Amherst apartment, though this gives you quite a lot more, and you can end up getting more points off this, I think, once you get into a good flow with things. Like I said, I'm not exactly doing a perfect run here. You'll be able to do a lot better probably yourself once you work on your builds, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm busy talking and buggering around. As I said, there's not too much hard in this mission here. There's mostly the charging melee enemies that spawn in front of you. They can really end your playthrough quite quickly, especially when you're alone. The contamination really does build up. Well, that was silly of me. Alright, he's gone. Alright, now we're getting up to the boss bit here. Now you want to prepare yourself, make sure you've got enough ammunition ammunition crate tucked in on the right hand side of this little ledge here. I generally prepare myself a stun grenade, like a shock or something like that. You can even do a fire grenade just in case you get a bit tricky to spot. So what we're going to do, if you follow me here, is we're going to head down the right hand side where those two items are, and we're going to head up and to the right. We're going to forget about all the enemies there on the left, and the melee guys behind us at first and just try to kill the guy in front of us. If he gets too close to you, you will start taking damage. Uh, you've got to be careful about that. Uh, at the moment I've got a sticky bomb on. I haven't been using it very much in this. Uh, but change over to flashbang, that can give you an extra couple of seconds. So I've just flashbang in the pack to revive you. I've got the team skill on because I'm by myself so I can revive quickly. All right. He's coming out. He won't immediately start shooting you. He wants to try and get down to the bottom of the stairs to a certain point before he engages. There we go. Now they're going to come up from behind us fairly hard. Quite clearly, I'm not killing him quite quick enough. I might even go down here. But what you want to do here is you uh, push up, kill him. As you can see, they start to come from behind you. Now you've got the second one there on the left who will slowly be coming around. If you can get some headshots on the first guys that come around, you can really stack up that global event headshot damage on him. Oh, you sneaky bugger, you don't normally come from behind. Normally this guy here will either run around to the right or he'll stay there in the middle out of your sight. There we go, killed those two. So what you can do now is you can stand here and take out the melee guys quite easily. As you can see, they're all going to try and run down in a line. And it just makes it pretty much a skeet shoot. It's too easy, mate. Fish in a barrel. Once you get that first popping headshot, you start hitting like 200Ks with this. You hear that satisfying splatting crunch. Lone Star just lets me swap straight over, no reloading time. Sometimes I run dual Hungry Hog and Big Alejandro. At the moment I'm running an M700 Carbine for the Sniper. You can use your flashbang here to give you a couple more seconds if you need to reload. Same thing, shock grenade, fire grenade. Nothing else will come up from behind you while you're doing this now. There we are. They're all neutralised. Collect your credits from the enemies. Well, like I said at the start there, I didn't do super efficiently. You'll be able to get yourself a more efficient run. Normally I can do a little bit better if I run up to this first pillar and just work in here with the big hull Andro. But uh, it depends. Normally with his animation he'll try to walk down to about the second step here and then he'll start firing at you and start backing up. But that time for me he ran up to the ledge and started firing. Might have been because I took cover here instead of here. Just keep that in mind. The melee guys can't damage you through the floor with the severe outbreak debuff. So if you go upstairs, they won't be able to damage you with it, but it's not a great position because then you're pretty much trapped there. And as soon as they get to the top of the stairs, it's only a couple of meters running forward once they get to the top of the stairs to start you taking damage. It can cascade you a little bit if you're not taking them down, where if you stand back here once you kill that first one, normally Martinez stays there or he'll run around to the right. You've got a pretty much complete cover here. 
and you take on the second guy who comes around here, you can always retreat back a little bit because Martinez doesn't normally flank you like that. And you can take cover on this ledge, take him out, and then you've got a clear shot on all of the melee guys. No one will try and flank you, they'll just try and beeline you. And that makes it quite a lot easier. So I'll just run up and uh, complete the mission. We'll cap this one off. Agent, Clearly there's nothing else. Drop that tank someplace safe. Clearly there's nothing else that's going to challenge you in the mission. There's no more enemies or anything. The last thing for us to do here is just to press the button. And then you can repeat the mission. You'll do this much quicker with other players if you, you know, test it out yourself a few times. Like I said, I'm talking and messing about, so I'm not really doing it sufficiently, but... I'm pretty sure you could cut this down to about 5-10 minutes or something like that if you speed run it. Get yourself 750 points a time, two matches, one superior crack. That should do it, agent. Solid work. Job done. Yeah. Pretty much go to the map now and uh, just teleport yourself back to the start and do it again if you like. Do it as many times as you like. Alright, hope that video helps out and have a good one guys.